Hello everybody, welcome back to another video And today we're doing a little something very different than usual I know I haven't posted in a while, but um, For those who don't know, I've been playing Smite for a long time Like 10 years or so And recently, Smite 2 decided to go to make Smite 2, basically So what does that mean? What does Smite going to Smite 2 really mean at the end of the day? Because a lot of I read a lot of comments on Final Case videos, Incon's videos, and I generally have an idea of what's happening. I mean, do I know everything? No, but I have a general idea. I just wanted to shed some light into what game sequels are and things like that. So yeah, we're gonna get into that. And if you're wondering why I'm just I'm playing the game while doing this is I try to like sit down and like talk to people like talk directly to the camera I've never done that so this feels very uncomfortable to me so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna use the medium that I've always used this and I'll just talk to you from this like this I'll play the game then we'll talk easy enough so yeah uh, game sequels have been happening for a while and you probably know a lot of them some don't even, let's say, directly become, aren't directly a sequel. We'll talk about, the, the better example is Overwatch, for example. Overwatch came out and they decided, yeah, let's, let's do Overwatch 2. Why not? That, that should work out. But well, what did they do? What, did, what really happened? The general consensus of Overwatch is that it mostly was a reskin they the main point was the pve mode but that that didn't happen that that was left in the dark people were out, outraged the pr stunned of that horrible so there's that that's one example and something about a cowboy's name i'm, I'm not I'm not sure about that we're not getting into that and that was a sequel Oh, they also re changed the loot box system, by the way. So instead of having loot boxes, which I like, because it wasn't that bad, now we have battle passes. Do I like that? Um, I'm neutral about it. That's fine. I've never sat down and made the math of what gives me more and what gives me less. I, I don't really mind that. Is one HP? It's kind of bleeding. No. Anyway. Oh, wait. There's a kill here. What the phone, guys? What? No. <laughs> oh, worth it. That's funny. Pretty good. So, in the case of Call of Duty, for example, why do they constantly have sequels every year? Like, oh, Modern Wa Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Black Ops. How, how they work is that every year, Trey Treyarch makes Black Ops, and the other one, I forgot, I'm put it, I'm put it on screen. The other one makes the Modern Warfare version of it. Gold, thank you. So they make Modern Warfare. And then the year after, Black Ops comes out. And you have to pay 60 going up to $70 every year to play their game. Now, what changes in that game? Uh, mostly, the graphics are different. They have they add some a little bit of gameplay mechanic. They add skins. Microtransactions has been a new wave of things. It is an optional thing. But I mean, come on. You're just flashing shiny things at us. Of course, we might want to buy it, and that's okay. But the good things is that it's optional, and that's fine. Wait, let me wait. Just Loki stealing my stuff. Give me a second. Ah, oh, he's out. I'm not gonna chase. So microtransactions were fine. You and now you're just paying sixty dollars every year. It's like a renewable service, kinda. Or you have to pay the year. Instead of like Netflix charging you every X, you know, monthly. I mean, the worst case, uh, uh, worst case would be 
uh, World of Warcraft. Now World of Warcraft, that's they charge you fifteen dollars every month, so there's that. Wow. Um, auto attack spacing feels really bad. Let me say. I felt like that auto should have hit, but apparently I, I don't see the range very well. And now we have Smite. Smite is free to play. You don't really have to pay for it. Uh, there's just microtransactions. That's how a lot of that. That's how the company runs, or the monetization system that they have. Money will always be an important thing. You know, we hate a lot of companies for their greed. Now, the important thing is ask ourselves: Is high res being greedy, so to speak? Are they? currently being really greedy with their with the way they do things um it's high res two things came out one i mean yes you have to pay to play the beta but my argument is that you know you don't really want people that don't know the game to pay for it okay uh here's why i'm i'm kind of stuck on, on on this whole thing oh i saw this again Look at that. My autos feel so weird. Like, I can't recognize the range between them. So, is high res greedy? I would say... I, I don't know. I don't know how much they... They... they how they spread their money, how they use it. You know, it, it, it's... How, how it's distributed between the, t the, the people. But yes. Every company needs to run on... Wait... I'm gonna survive this. I mean, I'll just attack you. Oh my god, that was a little close. Every company has to run on money. I mean, you have to paint the designers. You have to pay the... Um, yeah, pay the designers. Make a living for, for the people that make the game. That keep the servers up. Design the game. Change the bugs. The ones that put their vision in it. It is a necessary, I mean, it's not evil, it's just how it works. It's just inflation and capitalism has kind of got us really tired of stuff. Like, it feels bad, you know? When they charge us a lot for things, it's like a barrier of access. But, kind of is what it is. But I think that what we have to take away is, you know, there's a community. We love this game. I play this game and I, I enjoy it. How much of it is greed, and how much is it is like an uh, art? Oh wait! Oh, I missed everything. Dang it! But yeah, uh, they don't want to charge people. Okay, sorry about the taunt. I, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, I, 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 I have no excuse. I do it for fun. It just, you know, it felt good. Sorry for boasting. The good news is that it is an optional thing. It is absolutely optional to, to play Smite to put money on it. No, she couldn't even dash that. So I'm post recording this, but there's a point I wanted to make that I completely forgot to make. And it's that another reason why Smite decided to do Smite 2 is because of all the memes of the spaghetti code and Smite was made on a really old engine. It, it was called it's Unreal Engine 3, which started development on 2004 and finished development around 2015. So it's it's a 20 year old engine. So it was about to, about time to port everything as much as possible into Unreal Engine 5, which is the new one. So that has been taking a toll on them. It's been 
it's a lot of work. I mean, you're, if you're transferring every bit of content that you made over 10 years into that, it's, it's a big laboring job. And they've mentioned this in one of their articles. So, but, but the good thing and the reason why they're doing it is because this allows for more gameplay options, more mechanics and more things that they can do now. They've added cool features like Hades being able to jump when he's, and when he's ulting. And you know, it's, for the longevity of the game, the, this is really good. So person. that uh, is really good for the corner. coders and it, uh, it helps them feel or have more control and have more uh, tools. It's just like an artist. Hey. Imagine you give an artist a paintbrush or, to be, or a different type of tool so they can create different things. So for us to enjoy. Middle so a friend of mine was talking to me uh, the other day about John Carmack, which was one of the main developers of coders for the Doom engine. He showed me the, this whole um, thing about a code that made a lot of space, but in their wiki page, the whole point is that he, he, he revolutionized the, the, the coding game. I'm not going to get into coding because I don't know anything about it. But I understood that he basically makes a, made a really efficient code that made it so you didn't they didn't have to use that much brain power to really use it. Mm, she's not going to fight me? She's scared of me? There. So this man, he revolutionized... And he open sources code. What does open source mean? It means that he made a code that, you know, revolutionized the game and didn't monetize it. Just gave it to everybody so everybody could just not have fun, but like test things out. Like use it to mod. It's like Skyrim. People mod Skyrim. There's a whole community about modding Skyrim. Everyone has fun in there. They showcase the, the mods that people make. It's a community thing, but when you try to monetize it, it feels disingenuine. And people kind of stare away from it. So, this is what I think the, the, the people are feeling right now. Because, you know, like I said, this is very biased of me for me to, to, to talk about this because of my, my history with them. I've gone to the office, I went to Worlds, I met everybody, and I... I feel for them. I, I feel for the, the, the how, how the the developers feel. When I went in there, my 2 was just about to release. And I was just looking at the, the pressure everyone was... Oh, wait. Oh, that's weird. Do you see that? Oh, good. Wait. Okay. I pushed him. into one point and then I walked into the other. That was weird. Either way, well, that's an inconsistent, inconsistency in there. Is it inconsistency? I'm not sure. But either way, the developers were trying really hard and you could feel that. And I just want people to be, to understand that this is a beta. It's an alpha. I, and I think that's why we, when we look at a game, we have to look into, into the the designers, not not the company. When, when we're talking about the entity of it, because we want to support the the artists that you know entertain us. It's like you're going into a restaurant. You want to support the people in there. You want you want to eat their food. Be a patron. You pay for the food and you pay for their for for the service. And so we have to do the same and think about it the same way when it comes to video games. Of course, you know, not everybody can afford it. That's why free to play is so nice. It, inclu it, it, makes, every it makes it inclusive for everybody rather than just, you know, have everybody have give a entry, a gate of entry. I mean, look at Concord that had a barrier of entry for a game that not a lot of people liked. So they had to shut it down. Sorry to finish the point like this, but um, yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, at the end of the day, I what I really want is you know for people to show a little bit of empathy to the developers. Like I feel their pressure, 
I feel all this my pros is pressure. It's a whole thing, you know. So I, I'm just feel uh, it's just you know all the doom posting. It's it's really aff affecting, and I just wanted to do something about it, talk about it. I don't know, just so people ha ha were a bit more aware of the situation. So thank you for bearing with me, and yeah, at the end of the day. I'm not telling you that you have to support it or, you know, I'm just, at the end of the day, each person has to do their own thing, uh, see what they stand for, what they want to support, things like that. So, yeah, I got nothing more. Thank you so much and have a good one.